Hey there, welcome back. Um, today we'll be solving Lagus, so if you didn't yet check Lagus, you should check it out. Um, otherwise, don't forget to hit the sub button and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Yes, so this it's the same always advice. Guys, before you try to watch me solve the challenge, we solve it together basically. Before we solve the challenge together, you have to check the challenge ring out to get something out of that. To gain something, to learn something new. Yes. So let's not waste too much time, let's go. What do we have? So passwords may only contain alphanumeric characters, so this lock is attached to the lock ID Pro Hardware Security Module 2. Um, okay, so I think they have done some new integrations into their cards. So they only accept alphanumeric characters now. So if we try to run the card, so what do we have? So enter the password to continue. Remember passwords are between 8 and 16 characters, <laughs> but they usually do not. <laughs> Due to the, some users abusing our login systems, we have restricted passwords to only alphanumeric characters. Okay, so that means that, for example, if I try to send um, FC or something that is not uppercase letter or that is not lowercase letter or that is not a number he's not going to be accepting that this is what alphanumeric characters means um, yeah so for example if we try to send let's say for example I'm going to be sending um, this uh, for example open and close brackets which are not alphanumeric characters for example, if we try to send those, what are we are what are we going to be having? So the password is not correct, and we have a return to this place. Okay. Okay, I don't know exactly now. Um, any, I don't have any idea about what the program is doing. That's why we need to reverse engineer the code statically to understand what this code is doing. So if you go and check that out, what do we have? So we go into the main, uh, we check the main. So what do we have in the main? So the main is having a call to the login function and is returning basically to this stop program execution. So if we go and check the log and uh, we see now that he's doing some stuff. So we got to analyze that. So this is just saving the, um, the register 11 then um, allocating space on the stack frame of log n so he's basically allocating some uh, some some space on the stack uh, on the stack frame of the login yes then he's sending some usual messages then he is reading the input or he is reading the password so reading the password uh, what else do we have? So this is the size of the password that we can read. And this is the destination address, which is 2400. Then he is moving one byte of data into the register 15. So he is moving register 15 equals um, to the address or to the character that is pointed to by the 2400 which is the first character then he is initializing the register 14 with a zero then he is um, just putting into the register 12 the number 0x9 and we have register 13 equals to the 0x19 okay then he is jumping back to the log n plus 0x 10 which is 16 bytes so if we count them so this is e4 this is an e6 this is an 8 um, this is uh, e10 and this is e12 this is e14 and this is e16 so he's basically going to be doing he's basically going to be jumping to this place okay so what do we have so he will be moving basically one byte of data from the register 15 into the register 11 then he will be adding this negative value to the register 11 then he will be comparing these two and then if there is a query then he will be jumping back now the thing about this block we don't have to gain some time basically we don't have to reverse back um, all the code that is in here basically we just have, for example, we can just skip this part where he will be doing the checks on the characters. So basically, he will be checking the characters if they are alphanumerical or not. And we've seen that on the dynamic analysis that we have that we have um, just did. Um, we've seen that, for example, let's say, let's say, for example, I'm going to be sending, 
I'm going to be sending, for example, um, the brackets tank. Well, before sending the brackets tank, let's see what happens after he did all the checks. So, um, one thing to mention in here is that after doing all the checks, he is going to be putting a zero at the top of the stack pointer, and then he will be moving. So, 0x200 into the register 13, and then he will be clearing the um, register 14, just setting it for, that means that the register 14 is going to be equal to 0, um, and that is the size, basically, size of the, uh, since there is a call to the memory set, so he's going to be setting some region of memory into some kind of data, so basically the data in this case is going to be zero so he, he is going to be setting um, he is going to set to be setting this region of memory starting from the 2400 to basically zero so he's basically cleaning the buffer that we have used to read the password that we have gave um, that we have gave to the program yes so this is just clearing clearing the buffer of the password I don't know exactly what is the intention yeah from that but I suppose he's going to be cleaning the password so after doing all these checks um, so one more thing to mention in here is that he is moving the stack pointer to the resistor 11 and then the resistor 11 as you can see is been the one uh, that's been used in a lot of those operations so that means that uh, that means that before moving anything to the stack so he's basically reading the password in the buffer and then he will be moving the content of, the, of that buffer into the stack pointer. So before doing any of that, he will be doing all those checks to check if the characters are alphanumerical or not. So if the character is not alphanumerical, he's not going to be moved into the stack. Otherwise, it's going to be moved into the stack. This, this is just a way to just gain some time on, um, on not reverse engineering that code because it's... It's time consuming and I have to make sure that I know exactly the ranges of those, um, of those numbers and all of that. I just assumed again that all this code is just going to be just doing the checks since I know that it is not going to be accepting alphanumerical characters. So this is just a way that helps me on it. Um, on reverse engineering the code whenever I have a lot of code and I don't want to reverse engineer I just set an assumption that it is going to be doing something and I use that assumption to complete my work so this is the destination address obviously and what do we have so after doing that he will be moving what's in the stack pointer to the, the register 15 which is the password obviously to check if it is the right password or not so if it is the right password then he will be um, granting the access otherwise he will not be granting the access and the password is not correct so he will be then cleaning the stack popping the register 11 and then returning so yes so what we have so I think it is time to just check the assumption that I have set so that means that after doing anything he will be clearing up the um, the buffer uh, located at the 2400 and moving everything in the stack pointer if the characters are alphanumerical so let's say for example I'm going to be resetting that and I'm going to be sending let's say for example um, 41 41 41 41 let's say 41 several times so if we send that and we can see now this is what the stack where the stack is pointing to and this is exactly the return address of the um, the return address of the login function the thing is that um, the thing is that 41 so I didn't overflow anything so uh, this is the return address so this is a pretty basic thing we can use for example the interrupt function well this is the idea that anyone can see um, and uh, anyone can see and anyone can just came with just after seeing something like that we have because because guys we have done that in uh, several challenges in microcorruption and the idea is pretty simple you just have over to do you just have to overflow the stack to get just to simply just override the return and get exactly to the place that you want to go so for example in our case i can just simply override the return address with the interrupt address and then just skip two bytes and then just put 0x7f 
uh, for example in this place and then just trigger again the return and when the return is going to be triggered it's going to be using the it's going to be calling or it's going to be jumping to this address and then it will be fetching the 0x7 app and open up the door for us but this won't be possible and this cannot happen why simply because 0x7 app is not an alpha numerical um, an alphanumerical character. So this is the problem. So just to get an idea what are the alphanumerical um, values that we can use, we can use values starting from 10 to exactly 7f. But well, 7f, we can use 7f, but exactly the delete is not an alphanumerical variable, an alphanumerical character because this is just a table of all the characters and uh, those are alphanumerical um, values or alphanumerical characters because they are um, they are actually the uppercase and the lowercase and the numbers so for example let's say I'm going to be using the alphanumerical um, characters alphanumerical characters table so let's just see what we have so this is containing all all of them this is a reference to all of them So if you go and just check them out, so it includes both upper and lowercase and letters and numerals 0 to 10. So if we add hex, so hexadecimal, hexadecimal, hexadecimal um, table, for example. If we do that, we see there is this little table. It, does it contain, anyway, it does not matter, guys, but... We have the uppercase and the lowercase and the number. So as you can see, 0x7f is not an 7f specifically is not a character that is uppercase or lowercase or a number. So that's why he won't be accepting that. And we can check that out if we want. So we can just do a reset and we can just do 0x. Uh, well, we can just send 7f. And if 7f is accepted, then everything is cool, I think. So if we go and check, we see that the 7F was not accepted because it was not moved in the stack. And one other thing to mention in here is that the 2400 is filled with zero. So basically the buffer that we have used in the password is also with zero. So that's why we cannot see anything because all of that is zeros. So that means that the program is not going to be accepting the input that contains, for example, non-alphanumeric characters. So what is the solution to that? How can we exploit such a thing? How can we bypass specifically this sanitization that is happening on the input? So the idea is that when I just check the entry points that I can find, for example, to exploit such a code, I, the function that we have, for example, that I can uh, try to exactly exploit the code is the interrupt the put character and basically the put character I didn't see something that I can exploit from because um, basically I didn't see anything that I can exploit from the get chart is the same but the get string here's the idea basically I got a simple idea how what about if we can just read another input into another place that is for example in the range of the alphanumerical values and the thing that came into my mind basically guys is that this get string is having basically address val so the address of the get string is basically an address that is in the range of alphanumerical values or alphanumerical characters because we have 46 and 50 and these two characters um, and these two values are basically alphanumerical characters so we can use that get string so we can return to the get string if we want but the thing is that uh, I have again to customize my parameters so I basically need to customize these two parameters so the register 14 will be holding the size so this this is the size and this is the address where we will be reading the input or well, let's say or well, let's just say the destination address and we have it to, to just say that we will be doing a 
um, it reads his call. And this is the interrupt that will be triggering everything. So the thing is that I cannot customize this two because two is not in the range. So let's say, for example, I'm going to be returning to the get string with these three parameters. I can customize that because it's in a register, obviously. I can customize that because it is in a register, obviously. But I cannot customize the two because the two is not a numerical. Uh, is not an alphanumerical character, so I just have to just try to jump directly to this push and then do the call. So we can just customize this too. So the way to do that, so we will be returning to this address, and then uh, once we return there, we have to push these two characters or these two parameters. We can just customize them together. We can, for example, set the size and set the address where we will be reading. Um, and once we do that, um, we can just then, after doing that, we can, for example, after reload, for example, some payload to the address that we want, we can just return back to it just by overriding the return again of this address and return to the code that we want to execute. So the code that we will be executing, we can, for example, um, use the code that we have used in the in the previous challenge, which is Bangalore. For example, we can just go into the disassembler. So basically to do that, we have used, uh, we have used 0x, um, 0xff00 onto the statue register, and then we move 0x10 to the program counter. I guess this code is going to be used to just unlock the door for us. So basically here's the idea. So the idea is we will be reading. So we will read again some code, aka payload, to open the door. So to do that, we will be calling get string again, but with customized arguments so here's the idea we overflow first overflow um, we overflow the stack to get to the return of login function second we set the return address the return to this address third we pass the arguments that we want in our case we will be for example we have to choose an address where we want to uh, where we want to load the code that we will be reading so uh, we can just use the range for example let's say for example 30 is a zero and so 30 is a zero, so yes, it is an alphanumerical value, so we can use 3030 30 as a value that we can, as an address where we want to exactly load the code that we want. Um, and then we have to give the size, basically. So the size is the second thing. So the address is before, um, is after the size. So the size should be, should be after exactly the address where we want to load exactly the code that we will be reading. So yes, so let's suppose the size is going to be 42, 42, since 42, 42 is a B, B is an alphanumerical character, so it will be okay, so it will be accepted. So once we do that, we have to return. So we have to return to a place. So the return is going to be 30, 30. So this is basically where we will be returning to. So, so after doing that, we have successfully now just triggered the get string i think so the fourth uh the fourth thing to do is to just give the unlock door code to the prompt of the get string yes i think this is just the way to do that so if we try to craft something for this so if we open up Python how much data now we have to overflow now this is the question how much data we have to overflow coming from this one so if I just reset a little 
Uh, for example, I'm going to be sending 41, 41 several times just to know exactly the offset from the return. So um, what do we have? So we have 41, so those are 16 plus 1. So we have 17. So if we send, for example, 41 by 17 plus now the address where we want exactly to go to, if we just go back a little. Uh, so what, what address do we have? We have 30, 30, which are... Um, which is uh, before doing that we have to return to this address which is 45 54 i'm sorry 46 we have to flip them together because they are in the literal indian um and then we will be loading all that in this in this address which is we will be reading the input back to this address with the size of 42 42 plus I will be returning back to 33 after doing all of that. So this is the payload that we will be using. So if we try to use this payload, so if we reset uh, and we send that one, yes, we have triggered the get string. Now here's the idea. Now if I try to send, for example, let's say I'm going to be sending now non-alpha numerical values, since now the exploit is going to be not. This is how we can exploit that. So. We basically exploited this. Now we triggered the get string. Now if I try to send, for example, FC, since FC was not accepted in the last call of the get string, because after doing the get string call, there was a check on the characters. Now we have triggered something that was that is not going to be checked, basically. So if I if I send FC, 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 for example, several times, it should be. Um, it should be written exactly to this place, which is 3030. As, as you can see, we have successfully exploited that. Now, if I reset again and try to send the same code that we have crafted, but this time try to execute another code, which is this one. Execute the code of the unlock door since he will be jumping back to this code. We have successfully unlocked the door. So this is how we basically break into this sanitization that was happening of the alphanumerical characters. So if we try to solve that on this server, uh, what do we get? So solve that on the server directly. Yes, let's go. We have finished Lagos. Yes, we have, we are still, we have still, how much, how much challenges do we have? So we have two challenges and two challenges. So. We have yet four challenges to go and we will be finishing my corruption. I guess it is time to accelerate a little and solve all of them together. So yes, so I hope you have enjoyed the video. I hope you have learned something new. Don't forget to hit the sub button and see you on the next video. Bye.